All right, what's up, y'all? It's like a fan here. As looks about how today's video, John ja Morant plus Hall of Fame quick first step is unguardable in NBA 2K23. So in today's video is my comp NBA 2K23 My League series that we're doing with me and all my boys. We got 24 people in here. So very quickly, a little overview on John ja Morant. He's got Hall of Fame quick first step. Like I said, I added it to him. So if you're new to this series, new to the channel, we've been doing this series where I'm allowing people to change one animation on anybody on their team and then also change one badge point from gold to Hall of Fame on their team as well. So for instance, my animation change was Anthony Davis and I changed his upper release to PJ Tucker. Now with John ja Morant, I thought maybe to consider changing his dribble style because it is John ja Morant dribble style, but I come to find out that dribble style is nasty too. But anyway, pairing that with Hall of Fame quick first step and the fact that he still has limitless takeoff on Hoff. Fast Twitch, you wouldn't believe this, but this pair with Giant Slayer and being 6'3", if they put like a big lock on him, like a 6'9", 6'11", stuff like that, he can literally paint mash people, bro. It's crazy. His close shot is also, as you can see, like 93 as well. 77 three-pointer is pretty mediocre, but he can definitely still shoot. You won't see great shooting from this gameplay, I'll tell you that much. But you will see him just taking over in the dunk meter and quickness aspect of this game as well. And not to mention, as you can see, like I said, we have Anthony Davis on this freaking team too. So as far as our roster goes, it's literally just Ja, AD are the two superstars. And then past that, we have OG, Tari Eason, and Poku. Coming back from last season, I was able to pull off trades with all of these guys. Actually, interestingly enough, Tonic, who we're playing against in today's gameplay, I traded him Brandon Clark for Tar Eason, and I complete my little trinity, so to say, of having Poku, Tari, and OG back from last season as my three role players. So anyway, straight into the gameplay. I hope you guys enjoy. If you do, feel free to drop a like, sub if you're new to noties, all that good stuff. And like always, try one to like 500 likes. So as you can see, we start off with a little bit of a poor performance right there. We got Ja going for the dunk meter. Don't get it to go. Now for Tonic's team, as you can see, he's got Jokic at the five with a lot of role players around. This. So including Brandon Clark, obviously in the corner, in that left corner right there. He's the one that's going to be guarding Ja for the most part in this game. As you can see, Tonic built different with this Jokic stuff. Obviously, he's very good with his, you know, just stretch big style, post score style. It's literally the perfect fit for Tonic, whereas Ja Morant, perfect fit for me. So we start off very poor though. I mean, I'm throwing turnovers. You can see Jokic played perfect defense on the back end right there. I mean, he baited the step up on the mid range on me and then boom, backs up straight in the lane on, on AD. So unfortunate start already. You can see that he has Brandon Clark in the Jokic kind of pick and roll duo. So definitely matching the size as far as who's on AD and Ja. Jokic obviously not the greatest interior defender and then Brandon Clark while he is a good interior defender does not have elite badges So you can see I'm actually having a little bit of an interesting situation trying to figure this stuff out You can also see I've learned some new tech I, You've already seen it a couple times in the game You're seeing the green like uh, text pop up right here where it says switch I, to do this I'm just holding my a button on Xbox. It's called X switching on PlayStation. So this right here is a very key thing to know about because as you can see, it switches a lot of things. I've done it twice already. You can see we switched Ja to Jokic on the pop. And now that he's going to go for the back down, I'm switching Ja off of Jokic and putting AD on him just by, once again, only holding A. That's all you got to do to do all this stuff. So you can see Ja, unfortunately, not the greatest defender, obviously. But being 6'3", it does allow him to compete a little bit. We go for the jump contest with AD right there. However, Poku's not able to grab the rebound. So it's back to Brandon Clark and a little bit of uh, just recoll recollecting yourself offense back to TJ McConnell and I mean unfortunately Jokic is just kind of like put over in the corner on offense so lost possession right there for Tonic now Ja in transition is so fast bro it's unbelievable you're not seeing it on display perfectly right there but boy oh boy you just wait until further into this game this game is purely about Ja getting to the hoop because I'm not gonna lie to you guys I was not shooting the greatest with him in, in this game by any means but as you can see boom dunk meter we don't care about Jokic being down there his interior defense is not the greatest and then obviously Brandon Clark is still in the way but dunk meter doesn't really care to, for the most part unless you have anchor and unfortunately for tonic not any anchor on this team now the funniest part about all this stuff too as you can see once again brandon clark getting put in the poster by ja is the fact that tonic last season in our season one of the my league actually had ja Morant, and and i obviously didn't have anybody to match his interior de interior defense where I didn't have any anchor. I had Poku playing the five, which is not good. I'll tell you that much. His interior defense is like 66 or 70, something like that. And it wasn't exactly great. I ended up making trades. As you can see, Ja was able to force that jump ball right there, and we get it to go with him in his crazy vertical. You can see I'm going AD as the ball handler with Ja as the pick and roller, and I'm able to just get to the hoop with AD just taking advantage of his speed. Right here, once again, trying to sag off of Brandon Clark, but he just gets a perfect roll in there and gets a really good dunk animation. But to come back to the whole Ja Morant thing, 
Tonic had him last season and was absolutely killing it with a dunk meter. Tonic's obviously very versatile in his skill set as well. He's very, like, good enough with the slashing stuff and definitely, like, elite with the post score stuff too. So it, it definitely works out for him to have either of these players between Jai or, or obviously Jokic. I don't know if I could really utilize Jokic the way Tonic does by any means. Whereas Tonic's skill set translates over to the slashers a whole lot better than mine does the post score, so he can still do stuff like I was doing with Ja right here. However, I will say, I still think I'm a, I'm a slight bit better than Tonic as far as that stuff goes. So I'm out on a mission to prove it this season. I'm trying to really show people what Ja can do in my hands as well. And as you can see, already off to the start with the dunk meter. However, Tonic coming out here with the post scoring ends up missing it. But once again, Brandon Clark is really paying dividends for him and obviously snags that rebound down as well. Jokic back to the post up. AD, however, great matchup for, for Jokic. I mean, obviously, IRL, I don't know why the Lakers went so heavy in terms of like trying to put him on Aaron Gordon and not just put him on Jokic. I understand the terminology behind it, right? But obviously, as far as the matchup goes in 2K, man, I mean, AD is just a perfect matchup for Jokic. With the post move lockdown, the interior defense, the block, the anchor, all types of stuff like that. He's still got good perimeter contests as well. Agile, fast, can be in the pick and roll defense, really elite. And just It's hard for him to deal with this, obviously. However, as you can see, crafty, like, you know, finesse finishing and just finesse scoring by Tonic will definitely overcome any type of defense that my player has if I'm not playing the good defense myself. And I'm not even going to say it was bad defense, it's just that Tonic is just built different with his post scoring stuff, bro. Unfortunately, we missed the dunk attempt with Ja right there, it ends up getting turned into a layup. I try and do a little pullback with AD right there, nothing going, but again, we're using his speed and the lack thereof from Jokic. Obviously, Jokic is considerably slow but for that matter he still has like 60 speed as well so it's nothing horrible by any means but anyway we're going into the no job minutes I'm, i gotta get ja a sub early on here I, I like to try and end up with a situation where maybe i go with more of like a split ad and Ja's minutes so that's what we've been doing throughout the season so far and i think it's been working pretty good now super deep three from jay crowder right there no good so this is where we're going to try and utilize our non job -ja minutes as like AD being the ball handler. Now, I tried to call the play. Unfortunately, I'm sitting here looking for which one I'm trying to find. The play doesn't even work. I Apparently, AD can't be the initiator of it. So now I'm just like the play is just dead. It's, it's all lost. I was trying to get Poku on an off ball screen, but nothing going right there. But AD, here, bail me out. He gets the standing dunk. Now, you guys are going to see in this portion of the video, you're going to be like, bro, you titled this video about Ja, not AD? Because AD starts going crazy in this no Ja minutes. But then, I mean, it is what it is. It's the same way on the next end. Now, look at this, though. Shaden Sharp goes to the hoop. Tonic tries to dunk meter. I kick him out of it with AD in his rim take. I get a 100% smothered and Tonic makes it. That's that's ridiculous, bro. But either way, we're back on the other end, hitting him with the post spin. And you can see we once again get that to go. I mean, we're, we're killing it with AD right now. Now, he's able to match the post scoring a little bit, as you can see right here. Not really getting great moves off by any means from me right here. I, I'm not sure if this was Jeremy Grant that he had match him. Or my bad, not Jeremy Grant, but I was thinking Nerlens Noel. But I can't really tell... Okay, so, no, that's DeMarcus Cousins. Got you. Okay, so, it, it matches strength, but not exactly, like, you know, the interior defensive aspects of it. Now, as you can see, I switched AD on to Shaden Sharp, because I'm very familiar with Shaden Sharp's game, <laughs> of him being a dunk meter demon himself back as well. However, he's still able to utilize the screen the same way I do, where he calls for the screen from the person that is, you know, guarding by the point guard, aka Derek White, and he's able to just get Derek White in the action, and boom, he puts him in the dunk meter. Now, we're able to make him miss right there. We're back on the next possession. AD, trying. I'm trying to use Derek White as a screener, just to get little matchup switches and stuff like that, and as you can see, it actually works quite well. I, I've noticed this, this actually works really well to use your like five as the ball handler if he's capable of it and use your one as the pick and popper and just f fish for matchups and stuff like that because it's tough for those fives that are so slow to fight through the screens like DeMarcus Cousins and then it's hard for the ones to obviously even match up with AD they can't guard him down there so it, it really works out if you have a versatile playmaking like center like AD and Jokic both are you can do stuff like this really really you know just really effectively and it's pretty fun to do too as you can see, Tari Eason right here, fast, fast jumper, one of the fastest in the game. We're able to get that shot off from AD in the post right there, and we're able to take an eight-point lead right here. Looking really good. Now, AD, however, I just played him while Jokic was not even on the court. So now we have an issue of minutes split, right, where... Now I'm playing AD through 65 energy, and it's not exactly a great idea to do. However, I kind of have to, because I messed up a little bit and played AD way too much without Jokic in the game. Should have thought about that a little bit, to be honest. Right there, I'm sending the double team. I try and play two-on-one with AD. I get a 7% contest, and it doesn't really matter. He's able to get it to go. 
but yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm bringing I'm bringing Ja back in the game, so we're gonna be definitely utilizing him in all the offensive aspects here. I'm very okay with AD only being here for defense and rebounding. That's about it. I'm not gonna use him as a scorer very much because obviously he's just ridiculously tired, and using him as a scorer anymore is gonna just get him even more deep into that energy situation. So. As you can see, once again, Brandon Clark is killing Poku in this matchup in this game. Him playing at the four is just like destroying me. So we got to find a way to deal with that a little bit because we can't let Brandon Clark go off for freaking 20 points against us, against us or anything like that. As you can see, though, Ja getting to the hoop. Once again, dunk meter. We were in our bag this whole game. You're going to see so much on display pretty soon here. I, I know I apologize that the video is titled about Ja and meanwhile, he only has eight points. It's almost halftime, but he starts taking over this game like crazy. So. Once again, we're in a little bit of an off-ball defense situation. I'm trying to play with AD, and we're just going to sag off of Jokic a little bit, take advantage of his little bit of a slower jumper. But obviously, you know, it's a double-edged sword because you don't really want the ball in Jokic's hand 24-7. AD with the ball, you can see why you should not go with him as far as being on blinking red. But it is what it is. We're able to get the foul call. We get one to go, miss the other, and we're able to keep the lead to six points. Right here, once again, holding A to get that switch. Brandon Clark, though, with Ja on him. Not exactly a great look, and then obviously, as you can see, he's able to take off on a really good burst. Hits one of the free throws, misses the other, just like I did, and now he's able to cut the lead down to five. Now, I'm doing a little bit too much of this BS early on. I ended up calling some plays with Ja on the court. I, I should just like literally embrace the five out dunk meter style. Now I will say this stuff is very good. Like it's effective plays. I should have just hit the shot right there. It's still open. And as you can see, like OG is able to get open on that three very capably. But either way, Ja Morant is Ja Morant. I mean, you got to use him in the dunk meter style a little bit more. So I'm giving AD a little bit of a breather right here. We're, we're taking him off the court, putting Poku at the five, and I got JT Thor coming in at the four. And we're just going to go with the complete jaw takeover. You can see right there, I try and bait the dunk meter off one side, and then I'm able to just get a little stop and go and just wait for the other side. And boom, we get an easy X button dunk, which obviously is nice when you can get those, <laughs> when you don't have to work for every single thing as far as the dunk meter goes. As you can see though, TJ McConnell is getting to the hoop in this game. Like I know it's only four points and it's only like two layup attempts, but man, he is getting some finesse finishes. Now, TJ McConnell once again gets pulled into the dunk meter, but I miss us slightly. Obviously that'll happen sometimes, unfortunate when it does though. As you can see, we're in a little bit of transition defense right here, walling up pretty good. Get that out of bounds play and then boom, he's here for the inbound. Now Jokic, once again, Poku on him. This is a tough, tough situation, bro. Poku is not the greatest defender. He's more of a stretch four and definitely is not meant to play the five. However, I have him there for now. As you can see, baiting the stop and goes once again, just baiting that three pointer and getting him to step up a little bit. And we're able to get that point to go with Ja right there for 12. Now, this is where things start getting a little bit dangerous for Ja is if you get more and more dunks with him, his takeover is going to build up. And the more his takeover builds up, obviously he's working with slash take. And that's where things are going to get real greasy. Now right there too, I'm trying to double team off Brandon Clark because I'm like, okay, he's got 50 something three pointer. I I've been there before. I know his jumper is like decent. That's the whole reason I was able to sell tonic on the trade in the first place for Tari Eason. But Man, I mean, you got to live with that at least, uh, like to just deal with an open jump shot. When you got Poku Guard and Jokic, like you're going to have to send double teams for sure. But anyway, we're able to get a nice dunk meter to go with Ja once again. JT Thor, we're baiting off that, you know, Brandon Clark once again, but he's able to still get to the hoop and draw another foul with Jokic and he's able to tie the game up again. So... We're going to have to get AD back in here, and as you can see, we do that exact thing as well. Now, his energy is still not going to be the greatest, so we're going to have to treat him once again like we kind of were early on, where Ja is going to take over, and we're going to treat AD like more of just a stretch five and, you know, just like maybe a pick and roller sometimes here and there as well, but definitely not a ball handler. Well, the ball is going to be in Ja Morant's hands all game for the rest of this game, pretty much. I mean, you kind of have to. Now, as you can see, AD paying dividends on defense right there. He's able to get a really good block from behind. We're able to play some off-ball D right here. I'm baiting the Jokic pass. However, as you can see, Tonic goes with the hop jumper to the top. We're able to get a good contest on it, though. We're out in transition with Ja, and as you can see, we are putting pedal to the metal. He's going to end up fouling us. That will happen occasionally where he's going to be able to just get us with that sometimes. Right here, I'm trying to like bait a little pass to Ja. We're really stalled out on offense right now, though. As you can see right here, I have takeover very, very close. If anybody's curious how to look at stuff like this, you pretty much just have to tap your left bumper, and boom, you'll see red rings pop up around your players. If it's about like literally right here, boom, you can push in your right stick, activate takeover. So Ja is getting very close. So is AD. So anything that I do with Ja is going to be able to get that takeover active. As you can see, once again, dunk, meter, dunk, meter, dunk, meter. I mean, he's so hard to guard in the right hands. 
Like, just, I didn't even shoot very well in this game at all with Ja, and it doesn't matter. You can still utilize him to an elite level if you are good with your dunk meter. Because the nice thing about my league, I will say, and just to let you guys know, also nice pick and pop by Tonic right there, but I will let you guys know, I've been playing some my team lately, and come to find out, you know, everybody's super tall, like seven foot plus, and has like gold to Hoff anchor everywhere. I'm coming to find out dunk metering and contact dunk metering is non-existent in my team. You can't do it. You got to be way more crafty, way more shot creator-esque. And, you know, the slasher stuff like this that me and Tonic are going back and forth doing, it doesn't work. You can't activate contact dunks with the amount of anchor that's on the court in that my team stuff. Whereas in my league, nobody on Tonic's team even has bronze anchor. And obviously, it's just a more, it's a less like, you know, inflated uh game mode as far as badges and stuff goes so the less badges there are the more doable the dunk meter is albeit you do need to have an elite slasher as well so that's where just people like john moran just stand out in this my league stuff so much more than they would in a my team aspect but anyway as you can see once again coming out in transition just destroying the rims <laughs> jays and we're able to cut you know get our lead back to 46 to 38 tonic's able to get an, a late to go right there with shade and sharp on a dunk meter too though However, his plus minus, as you can see, minus 11. So the minutes that Shaden Sharp is playing while he's making the impact are not very like good minutes right now for Toddy. He's down 13 when, when Shaden Sharp's in the game. And obviously that's because for the most part, Shaden Sharp is also going to be in here when when obviously Jokic is missing. And when Jokic is missing, it's a tough scene for Tonic. However, as you can see, he's able to get that Shaden Sharp dunk meter to go again. And we're just trading back and forth, possession for possession. He's going to go with a little bit of a double team right here. And he's able to push the ball into other people's hands on me. And it actually works out very well. I will say it's actually very smart for him to do that. I would actually maybe advise that he does it even more. However, that's the whole point of having OG, Tari, and Poku. I wanted people I was comfortable with as far as their jumpers go. And I mean, they're some of the best jump shots in the game. And not to mention, I've played with them for a whole season already. So that's where I have a leg up on some people now, for sure. And Ja, however, that I am new to using him, the dunk meter is something that does not require any technical like advancement as far as you learning how to play with them any differently. This right here is literally just, I've used the dunk meter a ton. So it's going to be familiar, like familiar territory, no matter what. Because obviously it doesn't change based on the player or anything like that. The dunk animations will change, yes. But a contact dunk does not change the animation at all. And as you can see right there, I think that was DeMarcus Cousins. Just got a contact dunk on me and the driving dunk with X button too. You can see I end the quarter on a really weird lineup right here. So I got Tari Eason at the point guard with JT Thor at the, at the three. And then I have OG at the two. So... Really interesting lineup, like I said, and it's mainly because I want to give Ja a breather, yet I don't want to go super small where Derek White's on the court. So, we're going more defensive, and I was going to plan to play through AD a little bit more, but as you can see, we're in, we end up getting fouled with Tari, so we're able to get to the free throw line with him, two free throws, and then we're able to end up on defense, where this is going to be the absolute best defensive lineup I've ever put on the court right here. However, I try and play the lane with AD right there, Jokic is able to get the pick and pop, and obviously I kind of fly by him, so it's a little bit more of a blinder situation. We're going to have AD be our point guard though in this spot so two for one looming right here obviously we could try and get it unfortunately i'm getting stalled out by the freaking game not using my pick and pop at all right there so ad with the post up i'm gonna end up trying to take brandon clark down here but unfortunately i'm blinking red again we really don't even get a two for one off that if tonic chose to you know make it so i don't right there once again holding a to get the switch because we want tj mcconnell with an actual lock on him and ad on Jokic. he's able to get to the hoop with mcconnell once again but we're able to get a little bit of a lucky situation really makes one free throw now also i'm gonna make some subs at the end of that quarter right there i want to get Ja back in for offensive purposes so he's able to get pretty rested we got him back to normal i'm gonna look for that three right there go for the dunk meter again and man i mean look at the efficiency on this stuff we are just converting on every dunk meter for about like i would say the last like 13 i've timed them all really good i mean it's it's ridiculous that we're coming out here and just like <laughs> playing at this rate once again i'm trying to go for the i'm trying to look for the slash obviously primarily but this is a really good look i actually do love that ja has this in his bag because obviously as a defender if you're using this you have to deal with the like rim run you obviously have to defend that first and foremost so if i bait that a little bit get a little stop and pop and i'm familiar with the shot and also he's got a really good jump shot too so while I didn't shoot very well in this game, you will see that it's very much so on display in the future. Out on transition, though, Brandon Clark just absolutely using his speed, his offensive rebounding ability off the unfortunate con contest that ends up being down there. Brandon Clark, though, from the top, I'm, you know, very okay with him shooting a lot of shots that aren't corner threes in this game. 
I, like I said, he's got about a 50-something three-pointer. TJ McConnell guarding Ja. You already know this is donezo. It's over. Reggie Bullock trying to contest it down low. I mean, Tonic has nothing to do, like, as far as just interior defenders on his team. So Ja is able to get that in one to go again. I get pulled out of the dunk meter, but it's the life you live when you don't have Anchor on the court, man. It's just such a tough scene. For anybody that thinks Anchor is an overrated badge, you're crazy, bro. It, it's so necessary. Because if, if there is Anchor on the court, like on a gold or Hall of Fame level, it's really tough to convert on stuff like that if he's just camping the paint and in good position with it. But as you can see, once again, Jokic looking real fire out there, coming out there with the hop jumper. I end up missing another three with Ja. That makes me 0 for 3 or 0 for 4 or something like that at this point. Brandon Clark really flying out of bounds almost right there. And Jokic, once again, looking for those little outside post shots. Or now that he has Tar Eason on him, definitely looking more interior. I am controlling these A switches so perfectly, though, right there. Like, I was able to just, you know, end up with him getting post spin, like, destroyed. Tari Eason, that is, but I was able to switch him out to AD and AD's down there for the interior. We're able to get the block, and now Ja is out in transition. Once again, green the dunk meter, even though it was an open. You know, you never expect if it's going to be open or contested right there. I wall up really good on the post spin, and I get a good jump with AD on that as well. But Jokic going off in the second half with 15 right here, so obviously he's up to 21 points. AD with the ball. I'm going to be trying to work a little bit of a jaw pick and roll right here again. We got AD going to the hoop, however, and as you can see, I'm trying to mash him. He gets a reach and foul with Brandon Clark. It's a nice like aspect of the versatility on the defense. Once again, I'm trying another play call where it's going to be Poku coming off that off-ball screen, but it takes so long to set up. I don't even get really through the screen perfectly. It isn't open, however, obviously, but I just mistime it and unfortunate i mean just looking real bad i need to stop doing that stuff when i'm trying to obviously get more involved with ja right here once again walling up on that post spin really good once i defend one post spin i already expect he's going for the outside game because obviously you're not going to do that two times in a row trying to go for the interior like post post score so to say but I don't contest it very well. <laughs> it's unfortunate. Right here, working a little bit of the pick and roll with AD. AD's down, able to get down there for the mash. And now they're both getting really close to takeover. AD is close. Ja is close. And that's where the game is going to really get loose if I'm able to do that. So I, I kind of hide AD's take. Obviously, now I have rim. So rim matches up really well with the post score where obviously I can really defend more of the interior stuff. It baits tonic into the outside a little bit more. As you can see, though, Brandon Clark, once again, another offensive rebound into another paint mash. This man's playing like me out there in pro-am stuff, bro. A 6'9", undersized inside big man, pretty much, that's able to just come out here and O-board snag while Jokic is playing like tonic in pro-am. It, it, it's some frustrating stuff right now, but... Anyway, we're calling the quick ISO with Ja. I'm really trying to get him his takeover. Like, if I get one more thing with him, I'm getting take. And as you can see, we get the assist to AD right here. He's in the corner. I, I just kind of read out Tonic's drop on, on Jokic. Obviously, he was playing off-ball D. So, we're able to get past the initial defender. And then, boom, dot, dot in the rotation right there. So, once again, into the pick and roll, pick and pop. We're able to defend that pretty well. User in AD. Now, I'm trying to switch on to on-ball. You can see, once again, I'm going to be switching that screen where I'm holding the A button. I mean, it's so fire, bro. As you see, I can literally just play the right, he plays the left. Boom, it works like that. Poku is able to get a little bit of a contest right here. It makes it an open. Either way, though, Tonic shot an early on it, so it would have missed regardless. But anyway, Ja, transition. I mean, he's unstoppable, bro. Like, <laughs> it doesn't matter who it is. Everybody's, like, kind of camping the paint pretty hard on transition. But at that point, and this is what I was saying, too, with the whole good position stuff. Nobody in here is in good position, just so you guys know. Like, Jokic would have just got contact dunk because I'm, I'm being given a little bit of a shred of space on the left. This dude's like, you know, getting sucked in here and he's just got no interior D. And that's the other thing too. Not good interior defenders anywhere on the court. Just is what it is. And I mean, look at the speed on Ja too. The the whole, like the point of the video, Hoff quick first step on him and just the speed that he controls as far as the fast breaking stuff and the half court. He's literally unguardable unless you sag off. And in which case, if you learn his jump shot, which I'm doing as well, then I mean, you, you're just such a problem. Now I will say, as I say that, I'm missing another one right here. And it's unfortunate. I mean, I just like, I missed it. I earlyed it. I didn't know if the stamina was going to be in the, th in the threshold where I'm going to have to deal with it being slowed down or not. And unfortunately, we just missed that. However, here's the thing, right? Now, you would think like, oh, he's giving me another look at a three-pointer, right? Like, look at this. I mean, I'm coming off the screen. There is no defender here on this left wing. I'm, I'm clipping TJ McConnell with the screen really good. If I just played it long run right there, he'd have to step out really hard with Jokic. And he's not doing it. He's playing low. But guess what? <laughs> we don't care. It's last take, bro. You're able to just absolutely destroy people with it. And as you can see, Ja, 40 points, 19, 19 for 28. Still doing good as far as like not getting exposed on defense or anything like that either. I mean, 
It's so tough, bro. It's so tough to deal with this stuff as a defensive player. And I've seen it, bro. I dealt with it last season with Tonic. Like, it's really frustrating to deal with John Morant when you don't have elite anchor on the court. Again, he's trying to foul in transition. We're setting up another play right here. OG's going to go with a little bit of a screen. AD, I'm expecting that Tonic's going to step off a little bit. And you can see we were able to get the green with AD right there. Game's pretty much over now, obviously, so we're just going to go ahead and fast forward a bit, but anyway. AD, however, is going to be able to end with 30 right here, so I go with a little bit of a paint match attempt, but Tari Eason, ridiculous offensive rebound. I'm able to get AD a little close shot that just ends up being more of a push shot, and as you can see, 30 and 5 from him, and then 40 from Ja. I mean, look at this. So, obviously, we held Jokic to 27 and 10 on 12 for 23. I'll take that for sure. Brandon Clark ends up 5 for 9, 12 points, 5 rebounds. He was definitely hooping TJ McConnell did a lot better than I thought he would too but man look at the scoring spread between this team right now Tari Eason contributed five obviously he only made one shot and I had two free throws aside from that so only one field goal went in except for AD and Ja so these two combined for 70 points right here on only two turnovers I only went one for seven from three with them and in total probably went what like two for two for ten something like that two for nine but either way it, or yeah it is two for ten but anyway they both played really well, AD with three blocks, able to get his takeover a lot, which means he can stay in the game a whole lot more because obviously when you have take, your stamina will last longer and it just works like that. And obviously you can be used as a ball handler a little bit more. And Ja, same thing, had takeover a ton in this game with how many like finishes he had in the paint and the fact that he had slash take. So 40 points for him, 30 for AD, absolute killer game right there. We are able to get our record to five and two. So let me know how many more regular season games you guys want to see. I can at least like show four more maybe that I think are very like video worthy but if you guys would rather I just skip more to the playoffs and stuff like that I actually have been playing my team a lot recently as well and I would love to start posting some my team videos too so if you guys want maybe I could post like maybe one or two more reg season games and then boom get to the playoffs from there and that's all that I will do as far as the my league content from there and maybe we segue into some my team content because I'm not gonna lie to you guys whether it's budget or people I've been buying like I bought the new Kobe as well uh for like 50 bucks obviously it's a bit of a bad investment but besides that most of my team has been no money spent and I'm able to really generate offense with some really like mediocre players like very cheap guys and I think it's been a really fun experience and if you guys want to see more of that let me know for sure but I'm definitely going to be more in tune with maybe trying to post some my team content and then my league will definitely still keep doing but it's going to be you know here and there a little bit more I definitely will not be posting as consistently as I had been last season where I was doing it every other day anyway that's all for video. Hope you all enjoyed. If you did, for to drop a like, sub, if you're new to them, notice all the good stuff. And like always, tries one to 500 likes. If you made it to the end of the video, put Ja or put Morant in the comments to, support, to show you support me all the way through. Anyway, that's all. Appreciate you guys watching. I'm that Tatey's man. Peace.